Well, good evening and welcome to our service this evening. It really is a joy to have you here and for our visitors amongst us. It's been great sharing a meal with you and welcome. So we're going to begin our service today. I'd like to introduce our special guests here, Mary and Joseph and Baby Jesus. Um, Mary has been known to dance, so please don't be offended if she gets up and starts dancing, even though she's just had a newborn. So I do work with children and I do work with animals. So um, we were going to have Bruce the sheep tonight, but we thought we'd start with children. So Bruce is my dog, if you don't know that. Um, I was going to dress him up as a sheep, but we'll do that next year. I thought I'd start with the children this year. So welcome again, and let's begin with a word of prayer, shall we? Heavenly Father, we are so grateful to be in your house tonight, Lord, and it's so joyful to come and celebrate your birth and the special things that we can do to celebrate and just be together and sing these beautiful Christmas songs, remembering your birth. So we ask your blessing upon each one here as we celebrate and sing praises to you, Lord. We love you and we are just so grateful to be in your presence. Amen. Would you please be upstanding as we sing tonight? Many of the songs, if you're used to the Christmas songs, we've chosen all of those tonight. So it should be a fun time of worship, singing those favourite choruses and Christmas songs, as well as watching a couple of little clips about the birth of Jesus. So please be upstanding and we're going to begin with Joy to the World.
worship with O Holy Night.
Luke chapter 1, verse 26 to 38. Six months after Elizabeth had become pregnant, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a city in Galilee. The angel went to a virgin promised in marriage to a descendant of David named Joseph. The virgin's name was Mary. When the angel entered her home, he greeted her and said, You are favored by the Lord. The Lord is with you. She was startled by what the angel said and tried to figure out what this greeting meant. The angel told her, don't be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will become pregnant and give birth to a son and name him Jesus. He will be a great man and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David. Your son will be the king of Jacob's people forever, and his kingdom will never end. Mary asked the angel, How can this be? I'm a virgin. The angel answered her, The Holy Spirit will come to you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the holy child developing inside you will be called the Son of God. Elizabeth, your relative, is six months pregnant with a son in her old age. People said she could not have a child, but nothing is impossible for God. Mary answered, I am the Lord's servant. Let everything you've said happen to me. Then the angel left her. This is the word of the Lord. continue singing with Silent Night, please take your, make your choice. You can stand, sit, do whatever you like to praise and worship the Lord tonight. The story of Christmas, Jesus is born. This is Mary. Hi! You see, Mary was the mother of Jesus, but before that happened, she lived in the town of Nazareth. 
and she was engaged to marry a man named Joseph. Hey -o. Hi, Joseph! Who <laughs> got it? Mary got pregnant by the power of God. Wait, huh? Joseph didn't understand all this at first, but an angel came and told him to still take Mary as his wife. Yeah, okay. So he did as the angel said. Not long after that, the ruler of the land, Caesar Augustus, wanted to count how many people were in the land. So Caesar Augustus ordered everyone in the land to travel back to their hometowns so that they could be counted. Joseph's hometown was Bethlehem, so Mary and Joseph traveled from Nazareth all the way to Bethlehem. When they arrived in Bethlehem, they looked for a place to stay. Now I'm sorry. Oh, man. But there was no room for them. Uh, what about her? Um, okay. So they stayed in a barn, and while they were there, Mary gave birth to Jesus. Whoa. <laughs> she wrapped him snugly in the strips of cloth uh, that'll work. and laid him in a manger. Excuse me. And so the Son of God, the Savior of the world, was born in a barn in Bethlehem. to continue singing with what child is this and in a way in a manger a reminder of our savior's birth and the manger that he was born in not born in a kingdom not born in a palace but in a lowly stable what child is this who laid to
of Christmas, Jesus and the Shepherds. This is Jesus. <laughs> Sorry about that. We're actually going to um, take up our tithes and offerings now. If you're not come prepared tonight, please don't feel like you have to, but what we do is we take up our tithes and offerings and just drop them in the box there. There are a few ways to give. We can do online or um, here at the church or see Malalia and she can organise um, other ways of giving. So let's just pray for our offering this evening before we start and we will sing the Wise Men Christmas Star. Okay. Heavenly Father, we just thank you that there are ways that we can um, give back to you for all that you've done for us and the money that will be raised from tonight's service will be used for um, in our community to help lead others to you and to help help people survive what they're going through. So, Father, we just ask that you just bless this offering as we give tonight in your name. Amen. So please come and give as we sing this next The year. story of Christmas, Jesus and the Shepherds. This is Jesus. Jesus is the Son of God who would grow up to do amazing things. His parents on earth were Mary Hi. and Joseph. Hello. Jesus was born in a barn because there was no room for him anywhere else in Bethlehem. On the night Jesus was born, there were some shepherds in the field keeping watch over their sheep. <sighs> Suddenly, an angel appeared before them. Uh oh and a bright light shone all around them. Ah! The shepherds were so scared, but the angel said, don't be afraid. Uh, okay. I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all people. The Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David. Whoa, what? The angel told the shepherds that they would find Jesus in a barn wrapped in strips of cloth, laying in a manger. 
Okay. Then the angel was joined by many, many other angels, and all of them sang, Glory to God in highest heaven, and peace on earth to those with whom God is pleased. Then the angels returned to heaven. Of what does happen? And the shepherds said to each other, Let's go to Bethlehem. Yeah. So they hurried to the village. You say that. And found the baby Jesus laying in the manger. Wow. <laughs> After seeing Jesus, the shepherds told everyone what had happened and what the angel had told them about the baby Jesus. Everyone who heard the shepherd's story were amazed. Mary made sure she remembered all these things and thought about them often. Then the shepherds went back to their sheep and praised God for all they had seen. The baby was exactly who the angel had told them he was, the savior of the world, the son of God. Angels we have heard on I sweetly singing o'er the plains and the mountains in reply echoing their joyous strain Gloria in excelsis day
reading comes from Matthew chapter 2 verses 1 to 12. Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea when Herod was king. After Jesus' birth, wise men from the east arrived in Jerusalem. They asked, where is the one who was born the king of the Jews? We saw his star rising and have come to worship him. When King Herod and all of Jerusalem heard about this, they became disturbed. He called together all the chief priests and the experts of the scriptures and tried to find out from them where the Messiah was supposed to be born. They told him, in Bethlehem in Judea, the prophet wrote about this, Bethlehem in the land of Judah, you are by no means least among the, brothers, uh, sorry, least among the leaders of Judah. A leader will come from you. He will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called the wise men and found out from them exactly when the star had appeared. As he sent them to Bethlehem, he said, Go and search carefully for the child. When you have found him, report to me so that I may go and worship him too. After they had heard the king, they started out. The star they had seen rising led them until it stopped over the place where the child was. They were overwhelmed with joy to see the star. When they entered the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary. So they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasure chests and offered him gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh. God warned them in a dream not to go back to Herod. So they left for their own country by another road. This is the word of the Lord. Our last song before the message this this evening is We Three Kings of Orient. Would you just stand so you can um, just rest your legs and exercise them a bit before the message? So it will be a short message tonight, I promise. Sorrowing, sighing, bleeding, dying, sealed in the storm. 
You may be seated. So we're here um, for our visitors that are here, um, just letting you know that we don't have a worship team, so that's why we have um, videos with lyrics on them. And so this year we're praying in for a worship team. So if you wanted something to pray for our church when you go back home, that's what to pray for. We need a drummer, a guitarist, a worship leader, um, a couple of singers um, so that we can do our own worship here instead of having to use videos. But we're here tonight to celebrate the birth of Jesus. Is that what Christmas is truly about or is it more about presents? Yes or no? Oh, come on. Yes or no? Was there two questions in that? <laughs> so yes. Excellent. Yes to the first. Is it yes or no to the second? That's the question. Didn't realise I asked two in that. So I've been doing a sermon series over the last couple of Sundays focusing on Christ in Christmas and some different ways that means. And when I was doing all the research for that, something triggered, God triggered something in my awe is the only way I could, you know, an awe of God. And I don't know whether you realise what I realised, but I'm hoping you will. If you can play that video, please, Mr A.V.,
So that is the observable universe that we know of. That's as much as the scientists can tell you. That very furthest out picture where it looked like little balls of light, that's as far as they know of the universe as humans know it. And that's an actual, they say it's very accurate depiction if you're reversing away from Earth, that's what it would look like if you could keep going back to as far as they know the universe goes. That universe was spoken into existence by the word. And in previous couple of Sundays, we know that word was Jesus. So can you imagine the power that was in that word is now in this baby? The person, the God who brought that universe together with just a breath, with just a word, is now gone from heaven and glory and all that power is now in the flesh of a little baby. I really wish we had a baby here at church so I could have held it while we did this because a real baby would be more obvious. But all that glory, all that power is now in this little feeble bag of flesh. All that power is just in that one little human baby. So here we have God who's gone from glory in heaven, from all that glory, all that power is now in a cradle. And we celebrate his birth every year around this time. But that's just only part of the Christmas story. It continues on to the cross because this baby grows up to become a man. In our terms, a man. But still God takes on his disciples, tells us stories on how to live our lives, how we are to have a relationship with God and with others, knowing that he is journeying to the cross to be that sacrifice. And then from the cross, he receives a crown of glory because he goes through death and resurrection and is crowned again and is passed back into glory. Why did this all happen? So that we could have Christ in us, so that God could be a part of our lives, so that we could know God intimately. And why did this all happen? As the screen says, God loves you. That's why it happened. No other reason. There wasn't uh, a, a suggestion box for the angels in heaven. And he went through it and thought, oh, this is a good idea. God loves you. And he knew that the only way he could have a relationship with man, women and children was to be able to get to a point where we could easily call out to God. To have that perfect sacrifice that would then justify us before God. And it all because God loved you. That's why Jesus went from heaven to a baby, to the cross, and to a crown. So that you could have a relationship with God. Nope. Okay. Just go back to that final slide. So when you look at Christmas, we know that Christ is a part of it. But are you really aware of the true meaning of Christmas? And people often say that and they tell you that and you can read the story 600 times. 
but you need to know the Christmas story starts with God loving you and sending his one and only son so that he could die on a cross and be born again for you. Christ can live in your heart. When you claim him as a Christian, when you call out his name and say, God, I am tired of this, just, I'm all yours. God lives in you. Christmas has a meaning that is beyond just a baby in a manger, that is beyond the presents that you give your family, your friends. It's beyond the decorated Christmas tree. It's beyond the candy canes and the lights we put up. Christmas is about how much God loved you. That he sent his one son to become a baby. And in that baby, we would find our way to be a part of God's family, to be saved. So as you celebrate Christmas this year, if you're a Christian, if you already know God and you have an intimate relationship with him, share that with your family and friends who don't. If you don't have the strength or the courage to do it in words, talk to God. Show it through the love that he has filled your heart. Share his love. in your actions, in your deeds, in your attitudes, the way you talk. So that those around you who don't know who God is can know God and know that Christmas is more than just a baby that was born amongst the cattle and the donkeys and the sheep. That he is more than just a baby in the flesh that all the universe that was brought together, that power is in him. And that's the power to save you. So as you go this Christmas, as you celebrate with your family, take the time to share the story of Christmas and allow Jesus to be the centrepiece of all that you do. And you probably heard it dozens of times. Focus on Jesus. Put him first. And in doing that, not only will lives change, but so will the world. We're going to sing a song in closing called O Come All Ye Faithful. I want you to stand with me as we sing this song. As we sing the words, I pray they ring true in your heart. And if they feel awkward in your heart, then just cry out to God and ask him to uplift you and encourage you and to allow the Holy Spirit to come and just work in your heart so those words become more than uncomfortable but become a peace that settles within you. So please stand with me as we sing, O come all ye faithful.
So as you go out this Christmas and spend it with family, whether like us tomorrow, we're on the road for eight hours plus to get to family members tomorrow, I pray that it is in Christmas, and this is from Mother Teresa, it's up on the thing, it is Christmas every time you let God love others through you. Yes, it is Christmas every time you smile at your brother and offer him your hand. So I wish the love of Christ to fill your homes and life and make your days released to countless blessings that are not only for you but for those around you. Have a great Christmas, everyone, and then share God's love in the true meaning of Christmas. Thank you.